Hey everybody, welcome to Migraine Pets. I'm William Green. Just a collection update today in the grow tent. Um, the way that I decided how to kind of work my seasons, as it were, in the grow tent is based on uh, this information. So, um, this is climate information for the town of Moyobamba in Peru. And this is the area where um, Calia Rex originates from. And so basically what I did was I took the average highs, average lows throughout the year, average rainfall, and then I just, these are the actual months in South America and Peru, but I had to flip it for the Northern Hemisphere because the bloom season for me is July, August, bloom season in Southern Hemisphere is January, February. So if you'll notice that in its native habitat from May to August, there's a four month drop in precipitation, big drop. I mean, look at that. In April, 152, and then the next month in May, 77. Now on the flipped calendar, in the Northern Hemisphere calendar, that means that Calia Rex blooms about five months into the wet season. And after it blooms, there's a couple more months of really good precipitation, and then it just drops off. So this is what I'm trying to achieve in my grow tent. From November, I've been trying to create a drier atmosphere and hopefully that is what the plants need. So uh, why am I telling you this? Because we're in January now, so we're getting close to the end of the dry season. So when we get into March, we're really going to start stepping up, and even in February, we're going to start stepping up the, the amount of water that the plants get. So, why do I say that? Well, because I've noticed that some of the Calyrexes are already starting to wake up. And that is cool. It's a cool thing, but I, it's a little early. And so I'm kind of... I don't know if the plants that are starting to wake up should go ahead and start getting a little bit more water, or if I should just kind of punish them for starting early. I don't know if you can see this guy over here. You can see he's got a little new growth on him there. This uh, mounted plant has got a new growth. It's has started down there. So uh, I, th I think I'm going to still kind of just observe that dry season. Maybe pick it up a little bit in February and then when March rolls around really give them a good a good change in conditions. And that means that fertilizer is going to start picking up too. I don't typically, in the past couple of months, I really haven't fertilized at all. Every couple of weeks, I'll give them that um, indole butyric acid solution that has some fertilizer in it. So they still get a tiny bit and they still get regular water. They still get any fertilizer. So I'm really going to, to pick that up as well. Um, thank you to everybody who's, you know, sent me nice words and nice messages for these two plants. I was really, really happy to get those. Um, the, day that, the day after judging, I self-pollinated this plant, self-pollinated this plant, and I cross-pollinated. So I took pollen out of here and I put it in here. So we're going to see what happens. The stigmas actually do look like they have started to swell on these. Kind of, whoops, this one here. Kind of swollen a little bit on there already. And then this one here too is kind of starting to swell. So we'll see if those are successful. And I kind of had a question, like a moral dilemma. Like, um, these plants are from SVO. Am I free to just start crossing and breeding using S SVO's genetics? Or is that okay? I don't even, I mean, I don't know if there's patents or anything or if that can even be done. So, anyway, just wondering that if you know. Curious, but, um, you know, this cross isn't going to be remade anytime soon. You know, this came out in 2013, and it's, they're not going to make more of them. So the only way to make more of them is to cross the ones that are still in existence, and I figured since it's an awarded plant, why not? So, 
yeah, let's check a look. Let's go over to the other side of the tent so I can show you a couple more things. Okay, oh, yeah, before I do, I just want to show you this little dendrobium. It's a nobile type. No ID, but it is springtime has started for this guy. He started his new growth and he's got some roots pushing out and that's exciting. And then also I forgot to show you down here, the Phalaenopsis Sheldriana refuses to die. I love this little guy, he's a trooper. He's kicking out a new leaf here. And this looks like, those of you who called this a keiki, I think you're right. I think this is a keiki. I'm not, I still don't know for sure. But it doesn't look like a spike. See how it's kind of splitting like that? So, anyway, I've, I've been giving this thing periodic treatments with that copper sulfate. Um, Solution, Phyton 27. So who knows? It might it might survive. I, it, I was actually encouraged the way that the tip of the leaf here died, but then it stopped abruptly. See how it didn't spread into the rest of the leaf? That's actually kind of a good sign. Like the the plant's like, no, you shall not take my whole leaf. So um, yeah, and there are new roots. You can see there's a root pushing there. There's a new root there climbing out of the pot. Um, so it all may not be lost for this little guy. I'm really impressed. And then the big monster fowl hybrid back here has put out a spike and that looks like it's got little buds on it so it's going to be blooming. Kind of out of the way but you know, plant that big, that is just impractical. It's not practical. It's huge. It's probably going to crawl across the tent and come out and get me in my sleep. It's huge. All right, now let's, oh, sorry, I keep forgetting. So this side of the tent down here, so based on uh, a couple people's uh, recommendations, I moved the paths actually down, and uh, it actually looks like they still get decent light down here. Um, so we'll see if they if they tend to grow better or not. And then we have Cygnotes Wine Delight, which is kind of dormant, but not really, because look, New growth starting, of course. So, if I'm gonna divide this thing, it has to be soon before that thing starts putting out new new roots. And then next to it is the Dienia ophridis, which is dormant as well, and it should start putting out new growth too in the next month or so. All right, so we got the seedlings here, and uh, these are the. Uh, Calia Dawiana, Orea. These are the Blosfeldianas. These are the little Rexes. Some new roots pushing out down there. And then these are more Dawiana Oreas. Got a bunch of those. But look at those little roots! Yes! That is so good! All those little white roots going everywhere. Yes, yes, yes. Keep going, little guys. And then the emergency rexes, they didn't seem to be doing too well in sphagnum, so I glued them to some antlers, right? Why not? Um, but actually, check this out. Um, this guy's got an active root growing here, and then he's got a couple active roots growing here, like three, one, two, three. So that's great. So hopefully it'll just keep, they'll keep pushing out, attached to the, the antler here, start crawling around, and we'll be in business. That guy will be ready to go. This little guy at the bottom, he does not have very many roots. I don't know if he'll be able to p push any new ones out and continue. He's pretty dehydrated. These little guys. It's got little bits of roots there. Again, it needs to start growing if it wants to not dehydrate and die. And then these over here as well. They have got little bits of roots. And a little bit of a root is all you need to get going, but they just, they better get going. Uh, let's see here. See, most of the Calia rexes are still dormant, but you're starting to be able to see a little swelling in the, in the eye where the new growth is going to come out. Just a little bit of a swell, and that means we're in business. Here's that other one a little closer, you can see. That one's well on its way, hey, look at that. No rest for this guy, he just completed this bulb and now he's going to go for another one. 
And uh, is there anything else over here I want to show you? I don't think so. Hal's doing his thing. This uh, Maxima, I just keep super impressed with it. Look at how huge that sheath is. I did notice that one of the roots was turning brown. I cut it off. But I was like, how are you turning brown? You're planted in rocks. So, anyway, airflow is pretty good through here, but it is humid, and things may not dry out as fast as I'd like them to, believe it or not. And I'm very heavy hand, heavy handed with the water. I, I water, 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 water. All I can't stand. I can't, I can't not water. I can't stop it. So I have to kind of position everything to compensate for my desire to water all the time. Uh, this is Bulbo Lovely Elizabeth. Remember her from the fall. She is trying to plump up those shrinked, shrinked, what am I trying to say? Shriveled bulbs so that she can start growing in March, I think, is when she'll start pushing out new growth. Medusa as well. Pretty, pretty well hydrated already. Medusa, you done good this year. And then Hal, I would really like to see some growth on how flower sparks are great but i haven't seen a new nice new bulb on how in a, over a year well about a year oh and then a cool piece of news the um i told you a couple months ago that a i had i was getting a really really rare unusual orchid in the mail after the holidays and it was it's going to be mailed tomorrow i'm supposed to get it this week so i'm really Excited about that. Can't wait to show you that. It's going to be cool. All right. That is this week's update. Thanks again. Have a good week. Happy growing. Take care of yourselves. And see you next time. Right here on My Green Pets. I'm William Green. Bye-bye.